Hey there, Skillet here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you clicking on the video. In this installment of the Remnant 2 Zero Rage boss fight guides, we're going to look at what somehow manages to be one of the most frustrating yet easiest boss fights maybe in the game. So let's get started with Labyrinth Sentinel. Stop. As always, let's talk about a few things before we get into the fight. First, you always fight Labyrinth Sentinel right after you pick up the Master Portal key and open the Master Portal. Second, here's the build. It's just a straight up hunter. No amulets, no rings, and no weapons leveled up. Pretty much out of the box. For this fight, you don't need anything. So now let's talk about the map, which, as it turns out, is really important when it comes to defeating Labyrinth Sentinel with zero rage. You'll enter the arena right here, and you'll find yourself on essentially a grid, although it's not visible on the ground, uh, and you're going to have to avoid getting squished by four big blocks. Notice that the map is divided into an outer run here and an inner run here. They're separated by these bottomless pits that you can jump over to cross between the two. And as always, once the fight starts, you're locked in. So here's your arena and your character starts right here. When you enter the arena for the first time, those four blocks start in these positions. Now, if you die and have to start over, this changes a little. I'll talk about that in a minute. But for now, let's see how those blocks move and where you need to go to stay out of their way. Here they go. Now it's really, really important to understand that these blocks each run in a set pattern. That pattern doesn't vary. So they're always gonna run in this same track regardless of where they start. Once you know these routes, you'll never get smooshed again. Okay, so here's what I generally do. I'll start in these two squares, which are actually very safe. All you have to do is avoid block number one, but it's really easy to see block one as it approaches your area. And you can actually shoot almost all of the targets from here, as you'll see in a minute when we go back to the video of the fight. Once I'm happy with the targets I've shot and block one enters this area, I'll sprint behind it up to this square. If you've shot out all of the lights on block two, you'll never get squished. You'll see what I mean in a second. But from here, you can actually get behind block two and go to this square, which is also reasonably safe, but you do have to be careful because block two will come up and smush you from the back. It's actually possible to win this fight without ever setting foot on the inner run, but if you do want to hop across, this is a pretty decent square to be in. Just make that diagonal jump across the bottomless pit to get out of block four's way when it turns that corner. And from that square, you can get to what's probably my favorite safe space, these squares right here. You have great visibility of blocks three and four. In fact, you'll never be in the way of block three. Just go back and forth to evade block four and you have a great view of pretty much anything you might still need to shoot. So there you have it. Five pretty safe spaces that'll let you do what you gotta do without getting pancaked. Now there is one more thing I need to tell you about. It's gonna make the fight just a little bit easier than it already is, but you don't need to do it. You're not gonna see it in the fight that I'm getting ready to show you. So I'll save that till the end. Anyway, back to the action. So that right there is all you gotta do. Shoot those glowing white cubes out of each block. When you shoot a cube, it's gonna leave a big cavity, which you probably just noticed. Now, some of the blocks, in fact, almost all of them, have these glowing purple rings. That means that there's at least one active target on that block. So that's a pretty good indicator of what you need to work on and how you're coming along in the fight. All right, after getting squished, here's your second biggest threat. It's that big purple transparent cube that comes from the sky and cuts across the map in a straight line. It will do a good bit of damage as you can see, but 
if you're paying attention to where you are, it's fairly easy to just get out of it or avoid it altogether. Again, it always travels in a straight line, so you kind of know what its path is when you first see it, so you can probably find a little nook where you'll be safe. Now, take a look at these cavities left from shooting the targets out. You actually can fit in those while you're standing up. That's gonna come into play here in a minute, but for now, here comes another one of those transparent void cubes. And again, it moves in a line. I can just step out of the way, zero stress. You can see how much damage I've done to this thing, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a break for it. I just run behind block number one, make sure I'm not about to run into block number two, shoot out the light and watch. Bam, you fit in the cavity. I can stay in this square all day as long as that void cube doesn't come through. This is where block two zigzags back and forth a whole bunch. So I'm just gonna hang out right here until it runs its pattern. And as soon as it does, I'm gonna scoot behind it to that next safe square where I can shoot that out and that. So there you have it, zero rage. And see that window right there? Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take off with my five luminite crystal 750 scrap, a brand new Tome of Knowledge, and the Conflux Prism. So McCabe can make me this cube gun and a sandwich. And we'll see how that goes. But for now, remember I told you that there's a way to make this fight just a little easier? And I pointed out that window? Yeah, well, there's actually a way that you can shoot one of your targets before you ever enter the arena. If you're standing at the Fractured Ingress World Stone looking at the main portal, head up the stairs to your right and work your way around until you get to this portal. Now don't go through it, but instead head around behind it and take a look off of the ledge. Jump through this hidden portal and end up on this awesome platform. Head up the stairs, clear it out, and then go ahead and walk through the portal to your left. On the other side, take another left, head through the little opening. Once you're through, look to the left again and behold, there's one of the blocks. Shoot the target. Now your fight's a little bit easier. Earlier, I also mentioned that if you get killed and you have to start the fight over, that the blocks start a little bit differently. As you can see, block one starts three squares behind where it would start if you'd never been in the arena before. This makes it a little easier on you at first, but it does make this corner a little tighter, so be careful. One more thing that I forgot to mention because they're actually kind of negligible. Don't let these little void blobs hit you. The top spinning blocks are going to shoot them at you throughout the fight but you can dodge them easily, and even the weakest pistol usually one-taps them. Okay, so really, that's all. Everything you need to know to defeat Labyrinth Sentinel with zero rage. I hope this guide helped. As always, thank you so much for watching. Be kind, and GG's.